Thank you for the introduction. Hello, my name is Sayum Sanai. I am leading the FDA Cedar Next Gen Portal Informatics Initiatives in support of human drug application review with a customer focus analysis and pragmatic solutions that work to advance Cedar's public health mission. Today, I'll have the opportunity to speak with our stakeholders about the Cedar Next Gen Portal. As many of you may be active participant in Cedar Next Gen Portal, I will share how the portal have been leveraged to improve operational efficiency. As the agenda for today, we briefly go over the Cedar Next Gen Portal. What is it before and after the portal? What can industry do or stakeholders do leveraging Cedar Next Gen Portal? And then what are the progresses and what are the next steps? What's Cedar Next Gen Portal? The Cedar Next Gen Portal is an integrated cloud solution based on common industry standards for submissions, collaboration, and reporting. The portal enables sponsors to submit drug shortage notification, non-ECTD submissions for research IND, type 3 DMFs, emergency user authorization, and other exempted human drug applications with upload file size capability of up to 100 megabytes. During today's presentation, we will be able to highlight key areas of digital transformation and its impacts. So our story is um, the before and after Cedar Next Gen Portal. As you see, before is a manually intensive over the years, many submissions have been made through physical media consisting of paper, USB, CDs, and other medias. This submission type supposed to be a challenge for both industry and agency for processing. Manual intensive environment that could be error prone and create duplicative work. Also, delay occurred in delivering the media, finally getting to the correct office has a very roundabout process that could slow the drug application review process. With digital transformation, we go to the after, which is a streamlined Cedar Next Gen portal, provide a streamlined process. The communication and collaboration that are enabled within the portal allows for clean, complete, and validated data to be submitted. This reduces the back and forth and allows for a quicker review time as the submission gets routed via integrated workflow to the appropriate office. With this, there are several use cases on the portal that are already demonstrated the benefit of the digital transformation and we'll drill in those deeper in the next few slides. As you see, after the digital transformation, we optimized our processes and maximized technology. With Cedar Next Gen Portal, we have the end-to-end -end digital experience between FDA and the stakeholders. The portal handles the document upload up to 100 megabyte. As you see, Cedar Next Gen Portal considered as a one-stop shop for 15 different informatics application for purpose of submission, collaboration, and reporting. With this capabilities, we'll drill down in the next page to show you 
an example of each category. As we see, we have three key categories, the submission category, the collaboration, and the reporting. Portal allows industry users to register on the portal, enter standardized data, and make submission that gets routed via integrated workflow to the appropriate office. Once the reviewers have received the human drug application informatics, they are able to collaborate and provide response back to the stakeholders within built-in two-way communication features. We want to highlight today a few examples. From submission, we'll look into the alternative submission and the research IND submissions. Alternative submissions this capability enables industry users to submit a non-ECTD type 3 DMFs, emergency user authorizations, and other exempted human drug application. The document upload file size up to 100 megabyte. The same thing applies to research IND. Academia, research institutes, or stakeholders are enabled to submit non-ECTD research IND submissions rather than mailing paper submission. Now, we move on to provide some example about the collaboration piece. As you may see on top, control correspondence primarily leveraged by generic drug industry users, have been leveraging the two-way communication feature to collaborate and accelerate the development of reference-listed drugs products. With this and other collaboration capability, the portal continue to provide end to end digital experience. Last but not least, on the capability side, the reporting capability. A good example can be the drug shortage notification portal application. Industrial users have been reporting drug shortage notification with clean, complete, and validated data to comply with FDEJA supply interruption mandate to certain products. So, in a nutshell, you know, the portal has been leveraged for multiple collaboration purposes, such as the submission, the collaboration, and the reporting uh, needs. So what are the progresses, impacts, and metrics we have experienced so far? The CEDAR Gen portal continue to reduce regulatory overhead for sponsors, academia, research institutions, and small businesses. This is how we have seen 59% paper submission reduction since May 2020. And we have seen a significant increase in portal submissions. The total number of portal users increased month to month. Right now, it's about over 5,000 users are active in the portal space, and more than 40,000 submissions have been made. So, how can I create an account? See the next chain portal. Registration is a simple process requiring contact information and organization information followed by email validation. When the portal being available for multiple use cases, the design for user interface has remained consistent between each use case to provide ease of use functionality to users. The users can quickly register on the portal by providing contact information as well as their organization information. 
Once this information is entered, the details are leveraged across all use, use cases to minimize data entry. Portal user's experience. A user-friendly interface for submission, saving progress, performing validation, and build human drug application. Portal is designed with best practices in mind to streamline the submission process as well. Three key features, features standard across the portal includes application builder, Help Center, and Navigation Pan. Application Builder that offers a convenient and logical way to move between related pages and sections and easy to return to the home page. Help Center offers easily accessible support when making your submission. Navigation Pan offers the ability to transition between pages. Now we talk about the portal security features. The portal security feature is compliant with NIST security guidance and industry standards. The multi-factor authentication feature provides an additional authentication method for users to log in provide a security passcode for user login and confirming using a one-time passcode using email. Need support? The following support materials can help you get started on Cedar Next Gen portal. The sign-up guide, the alternative submission, research ID submission, and frequently asked question provide you with the initial starting point to conduct business on Cedar Next Gen Portal. With that, in summary, Cedar Next Gen Portal considered a one-stop shop for non CD submissions, collaboration, and reporting activities. You can upload document size up to 100 megabytes in Cedar Next Gen Portal per file. Cedar Next Gen Portal continue to reduce regulatory overheads for small business, sponsors, and inst research institutions. It is a secured multi-factor authenticated enabled portal, which ensure the communication between stakeholders and the FDA has been secured. Number two, FDA Cedar digital transformation. We are continued to optimizing business process and maximizing technology to improve operational efficiency and continue to ensure clean, complete, and validated data being available to support the center's mission. Number three, what's the progress and our impact? Our progress we reduced 59% paper submissions and our user base continue to grow month to month. Right now, we have 5,000 plus portal users and over 40,000 submissions to date and continue to improving operational efficiency. With that, what's next? New users may sign up by navigating to edmfda.gov. To wrap up my presentation, we encourage stakeholders to explore Cedar Next Gen Portal and consider signing up. If you have any question, please 
forward your question to EDM support FDA hhs.gov. That concludes my presentation. I would like to say thank you for your attendance. I'll be at the panel discussion and look forward to take your questions later on. Thank you and you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Sam, for your presentation. And for everyone, if anyone has questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A chat pod. And with that, we'll get started with our first question. Sam, can orphan drug designation be requested? Can that request be submitted via the NextGen portal? Thank you for your question. Yes, you can uh, submit non-ECTD orphan drug designation via the CEDAR NextGen portal. Okay, great, thank you. Our next question, will CEDAR NextGen be able to accept all full INDs one day or perhaps even NDAs? Another great question. <clears throat> At this point, uh, CEDAR NextGen is able to accept research non-ECTD research IND submissions. As we continue to transform the CEDAR submission process, uh, we will consider um, more application submission. But at this point, um, the commercial IND or other ECTD-based application are coming through the electronic submission gateways. Okay, great. Thank you for that answer. And we have another question for you. Is it possible to report drug shortages through this portal? Another great question. Um, yes, um, stakeholders should be able to report drug shortage notification via the CEDAR NextGen portal. Wonderful. Good to know. All right, another question for you. Does the CEDAR NextGen portal replace the need to use the old ESG gateway? Excellent question. Um, the CEDAR NextGen portal does not replace ESG. The industry users can only use CEDAR NextGen portal to send submissions which are not required in ECTD format or submissions, which have generated ECTD waivers. Okay, great. And we have another question. Can an agent register for an account with this NextGen portal and request a DMF application number on behalf of the DMF holder he's representing? Excellent question. Yes, an appointed agent can register for an account with the NextGen portal and request a DMF application number on behalf of the DMF holder. Okay, great. And another question. How will I know if a data element is required? Great question. A red asterisk will appear next to a required data element and you will not be able to submit your application until all required data elements are completed. I hope this answers your question. OK, 
Okay, great. You thank you so much. And we have a lot of several more questions coming in. So Sam, if you want to take a look at them and um, look at that document, we can make a quick announcement. So for anyone that is interested in CME, CPE, CNE, SOCRA, ACRP, or SQA credits. We just want to let you know that the announcement will be coming out later today and the instructions. You have to log into this live broadcast. And as if you are watching on YouTube, please make sure you click on the link below and register for this Adobe Connect broadcast. And then you can also ask questions. In addition to that, we want to let you know you have 14 days, which equals August 7th. And that's when you'll be able to claim credit. After that, we won't be able to. Um, and so let's see if we are able to take a couple more questions before we have to go on to our next presentation. And I'm looking like we might be running out of time, and I think this is going to be one of our last questions. So Sayum, can the Cedar NextGen portal be used to obtain an IND number to submit a pre-IND meeting request? Can it also be used to submit the pre-IND meeting package? OK, I think we're having a, a couple of technical issues for one second, but I think we're going to be able to have our next presenter answer that question during their Q&A section. And I think with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. I will pass this over to Renu Lal to introduce our next speaker.